friends, and welcome to your horoscope for April 2020, where this month, not only do we still have a continuation of forward motion that is available to us, we get supercharged with this conjunction of Jupiter and Pluto. We've got Mars continuing to travel through the sixth house all month long. And even though Venus is getting ready to change signs, she's going to take us out of bounds a little bit, which means our forward progress comes from getting out of our daily and normal routines, which is not Virgo's favorite. But you do tend to do well when you start looking for answers or for information. Now, another thing I want to tell you and I want to point out to you this month is that Venus is also going to come into a pre-retrograde shadow time, which means she's going to start to slow down. So please take note. Take very good, very big note of the subtle changes you're starting to experience because those will be the things that you're going to pay attention to and you're going to really work on and question and review for transformation during this Venus retrograde grade, which is going to come from May until June. So we will talk about that next month. Okay. All right, let's jump in and talk about what's happening on the Virgo weatherscape for this month. Okay. So right at the beginning of the month, like I said, we've still got Mars in the energy of Aquarius, which means it's sitting in your sixth house, also traveling with the energy of Saturn. Now, one thing I want to tell you is first of all, Mars is action. It's movement, but it's like the boots on the ground kind of action. You are motivated. You have desire in this area. In the sixth house, this is going to be about your health your wellness, including mental health and wellness, okay? Um, your daily routine, how are you taking care of your health and wellness? Hygiene, cleaning, Saturn being here is saying we're getting serious about this. Your daily routine is getting serious. Your health, you've got to get serious about it. But maybe the way you're getting serious about it is with Aquarian qualities, right? So it means you're doing something a little bit different. Maybe you're having to innovate this area of your life, bring it to a new place, a new level. Not not everybody is working right now. Some people are retired. Some people are not working based on quarantine and things like that. So in your daily routine, has your daily routine felt all over the place for just a little bit? Or are you maybe just looking to establish something that's different and bring serious new life and new progress for you here? Now, my experience in my own chart is when Saturn even looks at my sixth house, I end up having to get dental work done. This is my experience. So for some of you here in the sixth house, you may genuinely, Saturn being over the bones and the structures in the body, you may find that you're having to take care of things that have to do with your bones or your muscles or your teeth in some way, shape or form. I will tell you when it has happened, I have had to have teeth pulled. So if that's your experience, that can be something that's on the table. But either way, Saturn has elevated this area and is showing you that as we move into 2021, 2022, these are the things you're going to be working on. But right now, Mars in this area is giving you some action to get these daily routine th things, health, service to other people. If you are a freelance person or you own your own company, you're doing some work in some way, shape or form. And Mars is helping you to get it done all month long. Okay, on the third, Venus is going to move into the energy of Gemini. So she's going to move right over here. Now, what happens is, is anytime there is a planet shining, beaming, working at the tip top of your chart, it is one very public because the 10th house is the house of not only career, but soul level calling and also what you're known for in public. What do we know you as? Are you Mr. or Mrs. someone? Because this could, this could certainly be bringing a Mr. or Mrs. someone to you and they could be coming to you in an area of work or an area of something that you do. But the other thing that I think of with Venus moving into Gemini, specifically because you're going to use Gemini qualities to get things done in the 10th house arena, is one at work. This could bring you a pay raise. Or it could bring you, because Venus goes into a state that we call out of bounds right here on the third, and she's going to stay out of bounds all month long. So it means that where you'll make your money, where you'll have success around your reputation, where you'll meet somebody romantically, where Venus will bring her benefits into your life using Gemini qualities, so communication, you may have to talk to people out of bounds. Maybe money comes to you in a way that's kind of out of bounds of how you would have normally made money. Maybe you meet somebody and it's out of bounds or out of your normal routine of where you would have normally interacted with someone. The other thing is that I just think about the harm, harm harmony quality that Venus comes with her as well. Venus wants harmony no matter where she goes. So in your work life, Virgo, do you have balance? 
Do you have harmony? Do you love what you do? Do you value what you do? Where you're working, do they value you? In your romantic relationships, because this is tied to who we know you as, are you cultivating love here? Is there love here? Is there financial health here? These are all wonderful questions to ask here because again, I wanna point out, not all Virgos are working, looking for a job or anything like that. This could very much so point to romance and finance for you as well in these different kind of ways, okay? Now, on the same day, we've got Mercury and Neptune over here dancing together in a conjunction, okay? Now, Mercury being your ruling planet, which is great. We see that it will obviously have an impact on you. So you are having a spiritual experience in your relationships or you're ready to have a spiritual experience in your relationships they're creative they are fun there is spiritual types of people and information coming your way but because mercury is also the ruler of gemini up here and we've got venus up here as well truly spiritual things or things that seem out of this world could be coming to you at work and through relationships now i'm seeing i'm not sure who you are and who this is for but it looks like like you're walking into spiritual work, maybe. Something has been quietly whispering to you, Virgo, something about your work. And you are, you need to listen to that whisper because it's very quiet. But I think you are motivated to take different steps with work or romance or finance, something up top here. But it's spiritually motivated in some way, shape, or form. Now, Mercury and Neptune here in this conjunction as well, I want to tell you about this because it's a little bit of foggy information, right? You can't quite see it for what it is. Mercury is in fall. But this will be about your relationships for sure. Um, forgiveness. Do you have forgiveness to hand off? Do you need to shed something, allow it to transition out? Neptune's a planet of transition. Um, maybe you don't need all the details. You just need to practice the forgiveness and moving on in your relationships. Has an event happened in your life that is bringing your relationship spiritually closer together? That is a good use of this energy. But trying to make big decisions or sign big contracts or something like that with that particular energy of Neptune, Mercury, this is not a good day to, to do that. Give it a couple days, okay? All right, on the fourth, we're going to see Pluto, Pluto and Jupiter come together in their one of three conjunctions that they're going to have this year. Now, at this particular one, they are both out of retrograde, which tells us we've got forward motion, okay? Now, a couple things to think of is not only does the conjunction of Pluto and Jupiter together say, yes, go forward. I'm going to show you where your evolution is ready to take you, ready to expand you out. It's going to be here in your fifth house, the house of joy, play, true love romance, the beginning of things, conception of an idea, conception of a business, of a baby, of something that you are conceiving, your own self-expression is happening here. And these energies are driven. They are ready to be in motion. They are ready to expand out, but it's solid expansion. What you start here will be successful. This will bring something serious into your life. They haven't been in a conjunction like this for 13 years. So think back, Virgo, 13 years ago, what did you take on what were you doing it brought something significant into your life and now you're getting another opportunity the trick here is to remember to grow allow yourself to grow allow yourself to take forward action okay because this transiting south node likes us to stay in old patterns in old beliefs worrying is actually um, a management tool that Virgos like to use. They're like, if I just worry about it, maybe it'll really make something happen. And instead, this is not that. Instead, nurture the other side. Reach out to your groups. Reach out to the internet. Reach out to places that can give you hope and inspiration and encouragement to use this conjunction to actually grow forward, okay? It's a beautiful go forward time. You'll check back on it when we get to June to see what needs to be adjusted to the progress or whatever you started. And then and we can see it come to culmination and further growth at the end of the year. All right, on the 9th, like I was saying, Venus is going to go into her pre-retrograde shadow time, which means she's beginning to slow down before she's going to take this retrograde. So what it means is that you may want to pay attention to things in your career, into something that you're trying to do and move forward, because you may start to see things start happening slowly, right? Mercury is still in the energy of Neptune, so you, things may be happening just more slowly, but they are still happening. But they're getting ready to be slowed down for review, so whether it's romance, finance, 
finance, the actual job, who you want to be in the world, the job you want to do in the world, just know that on the 9th, if things feel slow, this is because Venus is starting to slow down and get ready to change directions. All right. Uh, let's get this moved. On the... Um, So let's back up for just a minute. So let's back up for just a minute because on the 7th, we are also going to be having um, a full moon happening here at 18 degrees of Libra, lighting up your second house. So this is a house of finance, but it's not only just finance, Virgo, it's also a house of value. And we're going to do the value of these things in Libra qualities, which means from your, from your own self-esteem, from your own new self-image, from your finances, the possessions that you actually have. This full moon is saying something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted, and you're looking for balance. What's the balance that you currently have between your money and your value and that which is attached to someone else, right? This could definitely be a time that says, hey, hold on, where are you? versus where you think you need to be with someone else. Where is your new identity showing up, right? So this is definitely a time to answer this those questions. also makes me think, just because it is happening in the second house and, and uh, Libra is naturally ruled by Venus, who again is a relationship and financial planet, that this could also be a time too where something is changing financially it's coming to an end you're reassessing it in some way shape or form um, according to your job maybe you really are ready to make money in a different way or just your money source is changing in some way shape or form but I also feel like this full moon sheds such a big light on if you need to be the one to take some action take some caution do some evaluation on those changing if Virgos out there who are looking, if you have been feeling like you're ready to call a relationship into your life, I actually feel like this full moon is so beautifully in your favor to do the work, to look at where you're willing to just look at the universe and say, okay, yes, I am willing to share myself with another human being. So that's a beautiful energy for that, okay? On the 11th, we see Mercury hitting the road, coming up here into the energy of Aries, okay? Now, Mercury in Aries, we are speaking forcefully. We are making strong decisions. We are moving forward. We are initiating different um, actions and energies because that's how Aries does business. Now, this is going to light up your eighth house. The sun and Mercury together are phenomenal for making decisions. You are just very well lit up. You are informed. Now, what you don't want to do is be too impulsive, with what it is that you're doing. And if you can avoid being really impulsive with any of the decisions you're making, I think you can actually, this is a nice time to make progress on your finances. Now the eighth house is also attached to another person, entity or something like that. There's some kind of joint situation that's happening here. So you could certainly see money coming your way or you're finishing your taxes or you're doing something like that, insurance, anything with wills or estate planning, all of that falls into here, but it's very well informed. The other thing I love about the sun and Mercury being here in Aries, in this eighth house energy is that this is just great for conversation with another person. You know, we've had this conversation about balance, you, the me, and the we, right? So where are you getting to have a new conversation that has depth, that has intimacy, that has beauty connected to it with another human being or with another entity that you are doing business or doing life with? It is so delicious for being some kind of collaborative, intimate energy as well. Now, on the 19th, the sun is going to move on and get up here into the energy of Taurus. Then, once we get to the 22nd, we're going to have a new moon here in Taurus. So, the sun brings light, heat, life, and vitality, right? We've got movement up here in this ninth house space. So, Virgo, in some way, shape, or form, we know that you are expanding. Now, what does this expansion look like? It could very much so look like, well... I don't know, we've had some stuff over here. Are your children expanding? Are you expanding your online learning by helping your children? Is something expanding around your business? Are you stepping more out for publishing, marketing, broadcasting, um, showing yourself in some way, shape, or form? Are you training? Are you doing some kind of advanced learning or something like that? Whatever it is, we know that you are not only expanding, but with Uranus up here, you are expanding differently as well. Another thought I'm having is just because Uranus is in Taurus, and this has to do so much with finance and, and real estate, you could be expanding your home in some way, shape, or form. So I think that that's something we can pay attention to. Jupiter and Pluto at that particular conjunction could have also meant that you're expanding your communication in your house in some way. So these are definite 
opportunities at this new moon for you though with the sun here that you plant your seeds of intention where do you want to expand where do you want to maybe buy something sell something publish that book teach that class maybe you're doing some learning in an expanded way in some way shape or form but you plant those seeds of intention and this new moon is at three degrees of taurus so identify that in your chart where are you wanting to go where are you looking for a fresh start or a shift in this particular energy because remember when the sun and the moon are together anything is possible i'm just getting this vision too many are in quarantine um, but i'm getting work related travel so you may be needing to travel via the internet or something like that instead of being able to do the actual travel unless you're still considered essential personnel and you are still of course traveling for work now on the 25th we've got pluto who is down here in the fifth house stepping into his retrograde now pluto is going to be retrograde for the next five months i will do a specific pluto retrograde video so we can really get into the nitty-gritty of it the details i know you're into that but with Pluto retrograde here, what you want to consider is you're going to go back over something that is not necessarily new. You maybe had the idea or you were already working on it before here in this fifth house. So children, self-expression, business things, romance, uh, joy, speculation, anything you were thinking about taking a risk and putting yourself out there with, right? It's already been on your plate. Now, as Pluto does this five-month retrograde, you're going to review it to see what needs to what needs to evolve here? What's going to evolve? Because during the retrograde, this is a part of the evolution. It cannot turn into what it's supposed to be next. You cannot turn into what you're supposed to be next without a pause to look back at what needs to transform and what needs to evolve. So you will be looking at this uh, for the next five months. Now, Pluto is going to go retrograde at 25 degrees of Capricorn. So we'll see that happening um, all the way until October. Okay, so you've got time to re review in Pluto's retrograde. And one other thing to just keep in mind is that Pluto works in a very subtle kind of quiet way. But ultimately what he's saying, Virgo, is that something needs to die off so that something else in this area of your life can live differently. So it's really your Phoenix kind of energy. Now, as we close out the month, uh, Mercury has done his tour here in very specific forceful Aries. And now Mercury is going to move up here into the energy of Taurus. Mercury in Taurus, we're speaking a little bit slowly, right? But it's still delicious. You're having conversation, you're making decisions that are gonna have long-term impact on you. They are practical, they are steady, they are dependent, um, dependable, that's the word I'm looking for, for you moving forward. And where are you doing that? You're doing this in your ninth house, in your own expansion. Are you needing to make decisions? Um, what's the next step that you're gonna take to put that book out there, to launch that education? Education, to do that teaching, to look for that new job, to even find out what the possibilities are about a new job. In your own expansion where we see you coming out with information, um, we see you coming out more publicly, especially in a different way. We've got changes to who you are at the top of the chart. This is definitely Mercury working here, trying to help you make these long-term savvy details on your expansion. This is a phenomenal month. I'm going to tell you, anybody involved in buying things, selling things or doing any kind of PR. If you are a student, if you are a marketer, this is a phenomenal month for you with information. So make sure you are taking absolute advantage of it. Okay. All right, Virgos, I love you a ton. I can't wait to hear and see what's manifesting for you. So please leave that in the comment section down below. And remember, this reading is not just about the Virgos who are out there hitting and running and gunning and wanting to advance your career wherever you're at, whatever stage of your life. These energies are lighting up for you. So I hope I was able to show you some of them, no matter what stage of life you happen to be at at this time and how to take advantage of those energies as well. All right, Virgos, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. Make sure you're taking advantage of the spring equinox gifts, which are still out until they're gone. So that's in the description box down below for you as well. I love you guys so much, and I look forward to seeing you next month. Bye, Virgo.